Today we're going to learn how to solve for a mixed strategy Nash equilibria, meaning we're going to figure out how we can solve to get each player to be willing to mix. In this game, I've just written down the payoffs for player one. So let's just look at what do we need to happen for player one to be willing to randomize. Well, player one is willing to randomize between A and B if she gets the same payoff from playing A as she does from playing B. If player one plays A, she gets one times the probability that X is played, which I called P sub X, plus four times the probability that Y is played, which I called P sub Y. So this is player one's payoff on average if she plays A. If player one plays B, her payoff is two times the probability that X is played, plus three times the probability that Y is played. So this is player one's payoff if she plays B. We also know that the sum of the probabilities for what you do has to be one. So this gives us the second equation. Now we have two equations, two unknowns. We can use basic high school algebra to solve. And if we do solve, we get PX equals one half and PY equals one half. Let's just quickly verify that that is the right answer. Given these probabilities, if player one picks A, she gets one half the time and she gets four half the time. You work, you work that out, that means on average she gets two and a half. She plays B, she gets two half the time and three half the time. Again, on average she gets two and a half. So player one with these probabilities is willing to mix between A and B. Now, generally in these mixed strategy games, it's easier to verify if your answer is right than it is to find if you have the right, than it is to determine the right answer. All right, let's consider this game, and now I've just written the payoffs for player two. If I want player two to randomize, again, I need player two to get the same payoff if she picks X as if she picks Y. If player two picks X, she gets zero times the probability that A is played, plus 10 times the probability that B is played. If she picks Y, she gets one times the probability that A is played, and two times the probability that B is played. So player two is willing to randomize, which means she's willing to play a mixed strategy, that means the same thing, if this equation holds. We also know that the sum of the probabilities for a player has to be one. The sum of everything you might do has to be one. Two equations, two unknowns, we um, put them together. You know, we solve using high school algebra. I didn't show how to do that, but uh, still you can use simple algebra. And you get P sub A is equal to eight ninths and P sub B is equal to one ninth. And, you know, right now you should be able to easily verify that you get the same average payoff from playing X as you do from Y if these probabilities hold for what player one is gonna do. All right, let's see what would make player one be willing to randomize with these payoffs. Now first, you know, like something should look wrong to you. I mean, A is a dominant strategy. Right, you're, you're, you know, if X is played, you're better off with A than B. If Y is played, you're better off with A than B. So if A is a dominant strategy. Player one should always want to play A. How could, what, what could possibly convince player one to be willing to randomize? Well, nothing, but let's just use the same procedure we did in the last uh, two examples, okay? We want player one to randomize. We need to give her the same average payoff from playing X as Y, I'm sorry, we need to give player one the same average payoff from playing A as B. If player one plays A, she gets eight times the probability that X is played plus four times the probability that Y is played. And if she plays B, she gets three times the probability that X is played plus two times the probability that Y is played. So player one is willing to randomize if this equation holds. We know that the sum of the probabilities has to be one two equations, two unknowns, we solve and we get, oh look, P sub X is negative two thirds. Player one is playing, player two is playing X with negative probability. What does that mean? Well, it, it doesn't mean anything, it can't happen. So the math is telling us that no mixed strategy is possible. And th this generalizes. 
if you're trying to solve for the mixed strategy in this, you know, two by two simultaneous move games, and if a mixed strategy is possible, you'll be able to solve for the four probabilities and all the probabilities will be numbers between zero and one. If it's impossible, you'll get probabilities greater than one or less than zero, or sometimes you can get it where you can't even solve the two equations, two unknowns, it'll, it'll you cancel everything out and you'll end up getting like two S to equal one. So the math will tell you if a mixed strategy is possible. Okay, for the final example for today's short video, uh, let's consider this game where I've written in the probabilities for, for the, the payoffs for both players. So player one is willing to mix if she gets the same payoff from A as she does from B. She gets a pay, if she plays A, she gets two times P sub X plus five times P sub Y. If she plays B, she gets six P sub X plus three P sub Y. And if this equation holds, player one is willing to play a mixed strategy. We also know the sum of the probabilities has to equal one. So P sub X plus P sub Y has to equal one. And two equations, two unknowns, that's enough using simple algebra to solve. Let's make sure this is right given these probabilities. Let's make sure player one is willing to randomize. Well, if you play A, you get two two-thirds of the time and five two-thirds of, two one-third of the time and five two-thirds of the time. So you, you put it together, the average payoff is two times one-third plus five times two-thirds. So that equals uh, 12 thirds. If you play B, you get six times one third plus three times two thirds. That's your average payoff, and this is also 12 thirds. So given these probabilities, player one gets the same average payoff from A as she does from B, so she's willing to mix. Now let's solve for player two. Well, again, for player two to be willing to mix, she must get the same average, average payoff from playing X as she does from playing Y. If she plays X, she gets seven times P sub A plus four times P sub B, right? That's right there. If she plays Y, she gets one times P sub A plus eight times P sub B, that's right here. So if this equation holds, player two is willing to randomize. We know the sum of the probabilities for player one has to equal one, so this must be true. Two equations, two unknowns, and we can solve and we end up right right here. Let's finally verify that these probabilities, that's enough to get player two to be willing to randomize. Well, with these probabilities, if player two plays X, she gets um, seven times two fifths plus four times three fifths. So that's uh, 14 fifths plus tw uh, 12 fifths. That's 26 fifths. If she plays Y, she gets one times two fifths plus eight times three fifths. So that is also 26 fifths. So these probabilities make player two willing to randomize. So this is a Nash equilibrium. So there's a Nash equilibrium where A is played two fifths of the time, B is played three fifths of the time, X is played one third of the time, and Y is played two thirds of the time. That means in that Nash equilibrium, the parties will end up in this quadrant with probability two fifths times one third, in this quadrant with probability two fifths times two thirds, in this quadrant with probability three fifths times one third, and finally in this quadrant with probability three fifths times two thirds, and of course the sum of those four things should be one. Thank you.